So boys and girls, for the past couple of weeks we have been focusing on our BPS values and today we will continue to focus on a BPS value. So I think you have been reminded very often over the past couple of um, weeks that a value is a principle that guides our thinking and our behavior. So that's a very important thing. So remember it's something that helps us in everything that we do. So when we make decisions, when we have to decide on things, it's that thing that helps us make those decisions as well. So this week I would like to focus on the value of perseverance. So we know we have, especially in grade 6 and 7, we have our test weeks and things coming up shortly and perseverance is going to be very, very important for you. So very quickly, perseverance, then if one has to sum it up and just look at a definition of it, one would say that it is not giving up when things get difficult. So you'll see the little line and the person very happy on the end there. So we'll explain that in a moment. So very often, boys and girls, we have a plan. So our plan looks like that sometimes. So we have a goal and place. We have the end line in sight. So there's the flag. I'm on my journey and it's a straight line and um, I'm going to get there. But very often, life, unfortunately, as we know, isn't always as simple as that. So it doesn't mean that I arrive today, I've got a math test, and boom, at the end of the, on Monday, my teacher gives the mark back, and I have an, uh, a 7 or 90%, and I've put nothing in between. Sometimes the reality is that we're going to have these ups and downs. So there are, there are going to be the little dips in the road. There are going to be the time when I'm feeling frustrated. There will, there will be the time when I'm feeling, oh, this is too much for me. Okay? So those dips will definitely come. And that's where your value of perseverance will then come in. So when we look at that line, that dip often, we can refer to it as what we call the learning pit. Okay, so the learning pit is a very simple thing of, as I said, you have your goal, you know where you want to go to, but in between there are some challenges. So often when you are starting, so let's say you're going to write your math test, you may feel a little bit anxious, you're playing your first cricket game, you're having your first swim, you're feeling, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious, I'm scared. Sometimes you may even be excited, believe it or not. But then you get to that little dip, as I said, where we then start questioning and we start saying, oh, this is too hard, I want to quit, I don't want to do this anymore. Or oh, I don't understand, our favorite word, um, when we don't do things, then we say, but I, I didn't understand, so that's why I couldn't do it. Um, or the best one is, I, I'm not good at this. I, I, I don't know. I, I can never do this. So we put these limitations on ourselves and we give up. So that's when we are in the learning pit and we are right at the bottom. But the wonderful thing is, is that because we are human beings and we have capacity and we are able to, to do things, we are able to rise above once again. So very often, we're through the help of other people, through sometimes your own determination, through the help of your parents, your teachers, your friends, um, you can get to the top. And that is when obviously you, say, you feel good because you have now, you burst with excitement, you're feeling that pride, you're very, very happy. And that's when we get to the, the, the end part where we say, you know, we have now done successful learning. So remember, all of us go through these dips and these learning pits, as we call it. So sometimes we are here, sometimes we go down to there, but through hard work, through perseverance, we can get there. So what does the learning pit tell us? The learning pit basically reassures us that um, um, on our learning journey. So it reassures us that, you know, we can get there. There is hope. Then it offers us the encouragement um, during those times of struggle or when we are facing that challenge. But it also makes us aware that sometimes there will be frustration. Sometimes there will be confusion. Sometimes there will be difficulties as well. And that is normal in any learning process. But most importantly, boys and girls, it also helps us to take the steps that we need so that we can be better, so that we can improve. So don't ever forget that. So we're never just down there in that bottom of the pit. We always can rise to the top. So in the world, there are many, many people who, as we call it, have failed famously, or famous people who have failed um, in, in the world. I'm sure if you speak to your teachers who are sitting on the side, they will probably tell you about their difficulties on their journey when they were studying, for example, to become teachers. 
So there are those difficulties that they have. But so just a couple of, to highlight a couple of famous failures for you. So we on the uh, side here we have Walt Disney, and he created a company, Walt Disney Animations. And there's if you go, if you hopefully some of you may have done that already, or you know, maybe you, you that's on your your bucket list, and you want to go and visit um, Disneyland. That was all his creation, but it didn't just happen. So he was rejected about 300 times and told that he had no creativity. And that's what he achieved because he never gave up. Okay, so, so remember, so when next time you see, the, when you're watching an animation movie and you see Walt Disney flash up on, on the screen at the beginning, and you think, you, that guy made it, but he failed 300 times, or more than 300 times um, as well. Then the, the guy I like quite a bit because I like his products, and that's um, Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs was the Apple, the Apple creator. You know the phone that we use, or the iPad, or the MacBook, um, or the, the iPods and so on. Now, that was his creation. But the beauty of, of Steve Jobs was that he was actually fired from the company that he actually created. And he was only rehired 12 years later. And he actually then turned Apple into probably one of the most successful and best-known companies in the world today. So remember again, we see this product, we think, oh, fantastic. But we don't realize all the hard work that has gone into the person, the, the product that we hold into our hand. So again, a famous failure there. For those of us who are football connoisseurs, and, and like it's quite strange seeing um, Lionel Messi in a uh, Paris Saint-Germain shirt, um, could normally we know him from Barcelona, but believe it or not, when he was 13 years old, he was told that you are too small to play football. You can't play football. And the same guy, he has now won the World Player of the Year, I think six times over. But yet he was told that you are too small to play football. So again, limitations were put on him. He was in the bottom of the pit, but he rose to the top because he worked hard. He put in the practices all the time. And many of you who, who um, uh, uh, do, do I even say it, who are Man United fans, will know that you now have Ronaldo that plays for Man United. Now, Ronaldo always says that he needs to kick a ball, I don't know, a hundred times over at, at um, practices in order to perfect his, pre his um, free kicks. So again, hard work, hard practice. So it doesn't just happen. You've got to put in the hard yards. Then our Springbok captain, Sia Kulisi, when he, he started going to, um, when he started or got a scholarship to go to a, a very prestigious school um, called Gray, um, Sia could not speak English at seven years old. But he had to learn through this journey. He could have given up. He said, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to do this. He then eventually got, he journeyed all the way through, got signed up to play for the Stormers, and eventually became Springbok captain, and in 2019 lifted the World Cup. But again, hard work that he had to put in into that. And then those of us who read Harry Potter will know that um, J.K. Rowling has, um, I think it's eight editions of, of the book, but when she went with the first publication, she was rejected by the publishers, by 12 major publishers around the world, rejected her, her manuscript of the first Harry Potter that she had. They said, oh, this is not good enough. And I think she's made more money than those publishers together, I'm sure, um, today because of what she's achieved with um, the Harry Potter editions. So again, very important to understand that all of us go through the learning um, uh, journey. We all go to the bottom of the pit, but we rise above because of our perseverance and determination. And there's somebody I just want to share with you. Some of you who follow basketball um, will probably know that the gentleman over there, and he's, he is considered to be the greatest basketball player of all time. The famous sort of number 23, Chicago Bulls. And that was made famous by Michael Jordan. And so we just have a very short video clip just to hear Michael Jordan in his own words. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times, I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. 
have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. So there we go. So boys and girls, so just like Michael Jordan, Walt Disney, J.K. Rowling, Circulisi, and many others like you and me, in order to succeed, we have to embrace failure or mistakes, but most importantly, we have to learn from it. We can't keep making the same mistake. We need regular practice. So whether it means I need to improve my reading, it means I've got to go home and I've got to practice my reading. If I still don't know six times six, it means I must go home and practice that on a regular basis. If I don't know my bonds and, and, and so on in mathematics, I must go home and I need to practice that in order to get better. If I want to be a better cricketer, if I want to improve my swimming, if I want to be a better musician, it means I have to practice. I can't just pitch up and think it happens, it comes together, and, and I don't have to worry. Every successful person will tell you they have had to work hard and had to practice at that. Then, boys and girls, it is, it is important to have the de de determination not to ever give up and always give our best. So being able to persevere through difficulty and to rise above is the key to progressing in life. So this week, my challenge to all of you will be to look at something that you wish to improve. Think of the learning pit. And so when you're in that, that situation where you're thinking, oh, I'm going to give up. This is too hard. This is too challenging. This is too difficult. Think of the learning pit. Think of the Sears. Think of the JKs. Think of your teachers. Think of me. And think uh, that you can rise above if you put your mind to it. So boys and girls, I know that you can do it. But the question is, Will you? Thank you so much.